Well, they don't call this game the Red River Shootout anymore. Apparently, that's not the politically correct thing to do, and don't we all feel safer now? But it was the Red River Shootout for years, maybe because there almost was one. Not about the game, but getting to the game. Here's George Reba. And I, I would remind you we're in Oklahoma. We're about four feet from Texas. <laughs> so you're on my side of the state now, George. Michael Dean works for the Oklahoma Historical Society. He knows that territory has always been a big deal between Oklahoma and Texas. If it's not a geographical dispute, it's haggling over who has the best football team. The OU Texas game was moved to Dallas in 1912, and students and fans have enjoyed the neutral site ever since. Imagine this. Thousands and thousands of Model A's, Model T's, Chevy's, Dodges, all headed south out of Oklahoma, headed toward Dallas. And once they got to the Red River, there's a big, a big traffic jam. Before we had expensive bridges and interstate highways, crossing from one state to another wasn't easy. Texas and Oklahoma had disputes involving boundaries and toll bridges. Call it the original Red River War, and it wasn't that long ago. The war, which earned worldwide notoriety, was over a free bridge across the Red River at Highway 75, now the southbound lane. The fight started when the owners of a nearby toll bridge wanted the public bridge shut down. There was no bridge across the Red River. You had to get across by ferry. By the early 1930s, 1929, 1930, 1931, a private company in Denison, Texas had built a bridge, a toll bridge, across the Red River between Durant, Oklahoma and Denison, Texas. A portion of the bridge still stands today. I just think this is amazing that the piers are there, that there are still uh, parts of the girders of the, the structure of the bridge. It's just amazing that all of this is still here to be as old as it is to have been constructed in the late 1920s. To underscore the challenge issued by the Texas-owned Red River Bridge Company, Oklahoma Governor Bill Murray plowed up the entrance to the bridge on the Oklahoma side so it couldn't be used. On the Texas side, barricades were in place thanks to a court order. And since Governor Murray said the state boundary actually put the privately owned bridge in Oklahoma territory, there was only one thing for him to do, seize the bridge. I feel that I should uphold the power of the state. No bullets were fired, but it's the original Red River War. Donna Hunt is a former editor of the Herald Democrat. He walked out on the bridge with his gun in his hand after the bridge was open, but nobody cared then. They had it open, so he kind of turned around and went back to Oklahoma. Governor Murray called out the National Guard, led the troops across the bridge, brandishing a pistol in his hand, and they marched across the bridge, and they seized that bridge and opened it up for public traffic. <laughs> And we call that the, the Red River Bridge War, and we like to think that was one of the first times that we beat Baja, Oklahoma, or Texas. Nobody really won, I don't guess. Being from Texas, we like to think we did, but of course Oklahoma, I'm sure uh, Governor Murray thought he did too, so he accomplished his purpose, he got it open. In 1961, the bridge burned down, and today these pillars are the only reminders of the standoff between Oklahoma and Texas and the original Red River War. George Reba Channel 8 Sports near Denison on the Red River. Texas teams would have been a lot better over the years if they had a toll bridge that kept those Texas kids from going north. And there's a couple of good ones on that Oklahoma team this year again, too. We'll talk a little Texas OU football next.